My name is Tzvi Koren, formerly Kornblum, and I am the director of the Edelstein Center for the Analysis of Ancient Artifacts and professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering right here in Shenkar College of Engineering, Design and Art in Ramat Gan, Israel. We are surrounded by colors. Just step outside and take a look at nature in all of its glorious beauty. In the clothes that we wear, this color, the foods that we eat, the drinks that we drink, and of course, cosmetics, there is color. And as most of you know, all of you know, most of the substances and colorants that we use today are synthetic, manufactured in laboratories and chemical factories. But for a bit over a quarter of a century now, I've been fascinated both personally and professionally by natural colorants, colors from nature that have been used in ancient times. And I've analyzed many dyes and pigments from various archaeological sources from here in Israel and beyond, some of them dated to 4,000 years ago. And what is amazing that some of these natural colorants are also used today in certain foods and drinks, and yes, in red lipstick. This is the star of my talk. Now, as far as lipstick is concerned, should you kiss with lipstick, let's take a look at what possible pigment could be in the lipstick. But before we do that, let's take a look at some historic examples of red-colored lips. Just two examples, and one is from one is from Queen Nefertiti, the Egyptian queen, from 3,300 years ago, and you still see red-colored lips as she has this beautiful red lipstick on. Another interesting example of red-colored lips is from the biblical literature. And we have the beautiful ode to love known as the Song of Songs, which according to Jewish tradition is ascribed to King Solomon. And the king extols the anatomic beauty of his love. And the king states, Kechut hashani siftotaich. Your lips are like a thread of scarlet. Beautiful biblical imagery. So we have just two examples, but there are many cultures from thousands of years ago that had red lipstick. Now the question is, what is the red pigment that is in some of today's lipsticks that use a natural red pigment? Well, let's take a look what was used in ancient times. The most popular red colorant is known as matter. From this particular plant, and you could see the roots of the matter plant, a beautiful red dye can be extracted for dyeing of textiles, as well as converting it to a pigment for artistic paintings, which has been done in ancient times and historic times. And the textiles that you see over here, are, and the colors are beautiful, are 2,000-year-old textiles from the famous King Herod's uh, fortress palace at Masada, and from other areas of the Judean desert. All the reds and the purples that you see in these archaeological textiles were dyed with the matter plant. So is matter the natural red colorant in today's lipsticks? No. Then what else could be? Well, another famous plant, my favorite plant, is safflower. And safflower, as you can see, has both a yellow and a red components. And the ancient dyer was an advanced chemist. Yes, an advanced chemist. By manipulating the pH of the dye solution, he or she were able to selectively extract first a yellow dye, and then afterwards a red pinkish dye that you can see from these modern dyings. And safflower, by the way, has two very noteworthy historical notes. Number one, the earliest Japanese kimonos, the red Japanese kimonos, are said to have been dyed with safflower red. Now, how can safflower, which is native to the Levant, that's our part of the Middle East, 
Where did, how did it get to Japan? Well, historians say that about 2,000 years ago, the safflower went to China first by the reverse silk route, and then about five centuries later, made its way to Japan. So next time you go to museums and you see historic red uh, Japanese kimonos, think of safflower red. Another interesting aspect that deal with safflower, its wondrous properties, is from the Talmud. And the Talmud is a multi-volume work that contains explanations and discussions of Judaic laws that are mentioned in the Bible, and it also has a lot of interesting folklore. In that Talmud, the third century rabbis, two of them, are discussing safflower as an aphrodisiac. Yes, rabbis discussing safflower as an aphrodisiac 1,800 years ago. Cool rabbis, we need them today too. <laughs> what do they say? One rabbi said, I know, this is an adult audience, right? I know what can give a man and reinvigorate him to give him some, um, to increase his sexual drive, let's say. And he said, this rabbi, Abaye is his name, he said, you take three cups of safflower, you crush them, you put wine in it, and then you boil the mixture, and you drink this love potion. Well, did it, I, that gentleman is writing it down. That's three cups of safflower, okay? Three cups, you tell me tomorrow morning how it works. Did it work? Well, according to another rabbi in the third century, he said, well, this is not a verbatim quote. Oh, yeah, did it work? It definitely brought back, rejuvenated my youthful sexual prowess. Third century rabbis, could you imagine them discussing it today? Anyway, is safflower red the natural pigment that is in some of today's uh, lipsticks? And if so, think about it. If so, if some of it gets into your mouth, it might uh, uh -huh, arouse you. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, no. So what could be the natural component, natural red, in today's lipsticks? Well, let's go to, if we're talking about the Talmud, let's talk about the Bible. The Bible mentions a triad of colors. Two of them are produced from certain sea snails. One color is called argaman, and argaman is a red-purple dye that is produced from the sea snails that give you a red-purple pigment, such as the one that you see. There is another dye that is produced from a related sea snail, and that color is techelet. And techelet, in biblical days, was a dark blue-purple dye, not in modern Hebrew, which is light blue, based on my uh, research of this subject. So, if you take a look at the sea snail, this one, that gives you a lovely red-purple pigment, could this then be the natural reddish pigment in some of today's lipsticks. Are you kidding? Who would want an animal extract to be on one's lips? Forget about it. So what is the natural source of the red pigment in some of today's lipsticks, ladies and gentlemen? This is today's lipstick, which I bought recently, and these are the ingredients. What could be it? It's from these lovely grain-looking things. Lovely grains, take a look at them. These are nice dried, grainy looking things, beautiful pieces. And all you have to do is put hot water in them. When you put hot water, take a look at the lovely color that you get. You get a crimson color from the solution. Very, very simple. And because you get a crimson color, this colorant is called carmine. Same root as crimson. And when you take these grainy-looking things out, they actually look like lovely berries. Very, very beautiful pieces. Don't they look lovely to you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the moment of truth, the natural source of today's red lipstick is an insect. An insect known as cochineal. 
and it breeds on certain cactus plants, especially in South America, Canary Islands, and elsewhere. And a lovely red dye that you saw there. These are living cochineal. They hide behind a desiccant that they, um, they show off in order to not to be dried in the sun. And it's not just any old insect. It's not just any old gender. It's from the females. It's the females when they're impregnated with lots and lots of eggs. And that's how you get the maximum amount of red dye. I see what you're looking at in your li red lipstick. That's how you get the maximum amount of red colorant out. Well, so my advice to you, ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, the next time you may be kissing somebody that has red lipstick, you may be kissing a bug. But heck, it may be worth it. Thank you.